The path to the big screen began in 2017 with the publication of David Grant's nonfiction book, Killers of the Flower Moon, The Osage Murders, and The Birth of the FBI. It received critical acclaim and a lot of interest in Hollywood. Acclaimed director Martin Scorsese and actor Leonardo DiCaprio were both interested in the project and the idea and the story overall. They worked together for the sixth time on this film. And originally, Eric Roth was recruited to turn the book into the screenplay, but later the script was revised multiple times to shorten the story and that plot. I mean, we got three and a half hours, so that's the best we could probably do. The film's budget was once projected to be quite expansive and expensive because of the period setting and because of the required resources it was gonna to take to film in a very isolated region in the country. Delays occurred for finances and for COVID-19 reasons also. The Pawhuska site in Oklahoma was highly authentic and it added to the overall tone, but it also imposed additional costs for the film's production. But that was all covered by Apple, who announced in May 2020 that they would financially and distribute Martin Scorsese's project. Killers of the Flower Moon is adapted from David Grant's 2017 book about the Osage murders in the 1920s Oklahoma. It boasts a large and star-studded cast. Leonardo DiCaprio plays Ernest Burkhart, a World War I veteran who romances life with Molly Kyle, portrayed by Lily Gladstone. Robert De Niro takes on the role of his uncle, Oklahoma businessman William Hale, who pushes his nephew to marry Molly Kyle in an overall scheme to take money away from the Osage tribes. The film marks Scorsese's 10th feature film with Robert De Niro, and like I said earlier, six time with DiCaprio. The ensemble also includes talents such as Jesse Plemons, Brendan Fraser, Larry Sellers, John Lithgow, and many more. This impressive lineup of actors promised to bring the historical events and characters to life with their remarkable performances. I was just taken away by Gladstone and Di DiCaprio in general. Their relationship and on screen, you really did feel a lot of conflict within the character of Ernest. But at the same time, you could also sense that Molly had this distrust Killers of the Flower Moon is a true crime story set in the 1920s within the Osage Nation in Oklahoma. After the Osage people struck oil and became incredibly wealthy, a series of mysterious deaths occurred amongst tribal members. When this all raised suspicions of a conspiracy and foul play, Uncle William Hell conspires with his nephews and others outside the Osage Nation to murder people from the tribe, including Molly Kyle Burkhart and her three sisters. The film really does a good job portraying the different schemes and the different elaborations that William Held and his accomplices did in trying to fool the Osage Nation into giving away their money. Local law enforcement also proved incapable of solving the crimes, prompting the newly formed Federal Bureau of Investigations, back then known just simply as the Bureau of Investigations, to take over. The plot follows the investigation led by Tom White as the FBI uncovers a complex conspiracy involving greed, corruption, and a shocking truth about murders within a family. The narrative sheds light on the exploitation of the Osage people and the challenges of seeking justice in a time marked by prejudice and discrimination. But it also highlighted the important role and the formation of the FBI, because of course, like I mentioned, it was just known as the Bureau of Investigation, the resources, the authority that the, that the Bureau of Investigations had back then wasn't very good, nothing compared to the FBI we see nowadays. As an Oklahoman who never learned about the Tulsa Race Massacre or the Osage murders, this film spoke volumes to me personally. And it's astonishing to see how many of these stories were hidden from public viewing for so long. The brutality in the film and the lack of empathy from characters like William Hell were profoundly just jarring at the time. The dynamics and relationships between Molly and Ernest also reflected the world that the Osage people lived in over a hundred years ago. They discovered black gold in the middle of a high life of success, but were overrun by sinister forces later on, like William Hell. The lack of a systematic help from locals and law enforcement was distressing, and the film did an excellent job showcasing some of those flaws of that era. The FBI was far from the entity it is today, and the story truly highlights why. Jesse Plemons' character offered audiences a valuable perspective from somebody outside the town and the state. I had the opportunity to see the film early at a press screening, and it did not disappoint. Scorsese's visual storytelling is as exceptional as ever. The director understands precisely when to captivate the audiences with striking images, and these images from Scorsese 
further contribute to painting a world that most people today in our modern society will find it hard to relate to. The character elements in the film were the strongest aspects in my eyes. The performances across the board were top notch and will most likely earn Oscar nominations. The conflict between the old and new worlds was palpable in Ernest Burkhart, who was torn between a loving commitment to his wife Molly and a familial commitment to his uncle William Hell. Hey movie lovers, welcome to Real Talk Movies, your next destination for all things cinema. If you're a big film fanatic like me, smash that like button and hit subscribe. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on future discussions, in-depth reviews, and analysis on all things related to film. Now, back to the video. The ending and court's trials were all well-shot scenes that effectively established the lines of both sides. Lily Gladstone shines in the film as Molly and powerfully conveys the facial anguish that the Osage Nation faced in the 1900s. I found the film to be gut-wrenching, impactful, and emotionally charging at its core. Scorsese brought in experts from the Osage Nation to help bring this story to life and through location filming in Oklahoma. Filming in such a personal and interconnected tribe setting is absolutely commendable, and I think that the film gets huge credits for that. The film's reception is likely to be similar from across the board, and I anticipate a lot of Oscar nominations for this film. In conclusion, my review and grade stands at a 9.3 out of 10. Killers of the Flower Moon offers solid writing, directing, cinematography, and an emotional connection. It pulls you in for those three and a half hours and never really lets you go. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Killers of the Flower Moon. Do you believe that this film is a fitting adaptation of David Grant's nonfiction novel? And did Swartz says he do an admirable job portraying each viewpoint of the Osage murders? Please share all your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching today's video and I hope that you enjoyed today's topic. If you could hit that sub button, that would be awesome. Hit that like button and boost my video up on the algorithm. Click that bell so you don't miss any of my videos that get uploaded. And if you have some time to spare, check out some of these videos on your screen right now.